Hi. Um, my name is Boki, and today I'll be walking us through a paper that I had the awesome privilege of working um, with some awesome folks at UBC and Vesta, and it's titled The Dual Nature of Technology in Sexual Abuse. So I'm going to jump right in. Why study sexual abuse? This is an SOK, by the way. Um, so why study sexual abuse and why look into the dual nature of technology? So research shows that every 68 seconds, an American is sexually abused. Sexual assault is a prevalent and destructive crime, and it's one that happens a lot worldwide. Statistics also shows that one in every six American women has been sexually assaulted, and one in 33 American men are victims of attempted or completed rape. It's also something that doesn't just happen in America, it happens in Canada, where I'm from as well. One in three women has been sexually assaulted. Similarly, worldwide, we see this trend in South Africa, in Botswana, and even in Sweden. But sexual assault is a very um, different crime. It's not as easy as your car getting stolen and you get, you get over it after a while. Sexual assault has long-term consequences. It violates, it violates a person's safety and their privacy and security, and it also has very long-term consequences. Research shows that 97% of sexual assault survivors go through post-traumatic stress disorder and 33% have contemplated suicide in their lifetime. With the COVID-19 pandemic um, going on, you find out that it impacts the domain of sexual assault in two major ways. First, sexual abuse has significantly risen during the pandemic, and also the pandemic has accelerated the adoption of technology. Since victims' reliance on technology is expected to increase even after the pandemic, it becomes important for us to understand what exactly is the dual nature of technology in one, facilitating sexual abuse, and two, assisting victims of sexual abuse. To that end, our research questions were, what qualities of digital technologies might enable abusers to conduct sexual abuse more easily? We also wanted to understand what qualities of technologies might help address sexual abuse at the individual, organizational, and societal levels? And we also wanted to understand what are the current challenges of using technology right now to help assist victims of sexual abuse? We believe that answering these research questions would go a long way in helping us identify the challenges in providing technological solutions or help to victims of sexual assault. So how did we do this? We did a literature review for, and we followed a four-step process. First, we defined exactly um, what, what we wanted to look for. Um, in terms of definition, we had uh, inclusion criteria, exclusion criteria, the source, and also the search terms. Examples of inclusion criteria, we included papers that were peer-reviewed, papers that were also presented in conferences, and papers that talked about sexual abuse um, or technology facilitating or assisting victims. In the next step, what we did was we went on to search. We did um, all of our searches on Google Scholar, and that resulted in identifying 258 papers that met the terms that we had previously defined. And then afterwards, we selected papers, we reviewed citations. Through the citations, we were able to get papers that um, were similar, or papers that also addressed our, um, our defined, the, the terms that we had defined earlier on. And this resulted in us having 224 papers from 2005 all the way to January 2021 that discussed, one, how technology facilitates abuse of sexual uh, um, victims, and two, how technology assists victims of sexual abuse. And then afterwards, we analyzed these papers, and this resulted in 148 codes, and it also helped us to be able to get some categories and characteristics of technology as well. In terms of our findings, so we have two spectrum. First, how technology facilitates abuse and how technology assists victims. So in terms of how technology facilitates abuse, we identified 10 characteristics of technology that makes it easy for perpetrators to use technology 
against um, victims of sexual abuse. And we also identified three ways in which technology assists victims, but we also identified challenges with the current way that technology supports victims. The end goal of this research is that we can be able to tilt the scale whereby we can be able to enhance ways that technology supports victims and reduce the ways that it currently leads to abuse of victims. So in the next slide, um, we have a lot of findings, but I'll be presenting a visual summary of our findings. I'll do a deep dive into one of them, and I really encourage you to please go on to read the paper as there are a lot of things there. So this is um, a visual summary of how technology facilitates abuse. Um, all of the solid lines here indicate specific characteristics of technology that enable perpetrators' capabilities, and the dotted lines indicate instances where the characteristics amplify those perpetrators' capabilities. This is a very big image, so I'm going to do a deeper dive into just one example. Um, so looking at covertness, so one of the characteristics that we identified is covertness, and covertness is the ability to operate technology in a particular location without the knowledge of the affected individual. This trait allows perpetrators to subtly gather information about or monitor their targets and victims. Perpetrators can subtly compromise victims' online accounts to impersonate them or to use their information. Researchers in lots of the papers that we surveyed reported incidences where abusers gathered information about their victims from their compromised accounts without their knowledge. In some cases, this also led to impersonating. For instance, Lawrence et al. talked about a scenario where a police officer wanted to get revenge um, against his girlfriend, and so he gained control of her email account, and the officer used the email to impersonate her on a dating site and arranged for 70 men to meet up in her home to sexually assault her. So this is just one example of how a particular trait or characteristics of technology could lead to the end result of someone getting assaulted. In some cases, um, we saw papers that talked about how the characteristics of technology has led to surveillance of one person, but not another. We found out that there are some technological tools that allow that um, to happen, and perpetrators can easily misuse these tools to gather information about their victims covertly, leading in some cases to blackmailing or coercion of their victims. So again, this is just one example of how a characteristic of technology can lead to people being sexually assaulted. Um, so I'm gonna present the other end of the spectrum, which is currently how technology assists victims of sexual abuse. So again, we have this big diagram that shows the many ways in which this can happen and I'll just do a deep dive into one. So we identified three major ways in which um, technology assists victims of sexual abuse. First, technology could help to restrict abuse, and this looks like um, having legislative laws to control the use of internet, or the use of mobile phones, or um, the use of technological devices. Another way is through investigating abuse, and by investigating abuse, this refers to Digital files can be used or could serve as evidence of sexual abuse, and in some cases, some victims use this evidence to help in investigating the abuse. And then the third way is through reporting and preventing abuse. There are so many technological apps and solutions that have been developed that victims could use to report sexual abuse. So even though we have these three ways in which technology could assist victims, we also identified various challenges, and I'll look into some of the challenges we identified with investigating abuse. As a reminder, um, investigating abuse just means using digital files as evidence that sexual abuse happened. And this could be, maybe there are challenges around when gathering those evidence and after you've gathered those evidence. So for instance, there are challenges around collating from multiple sources just the sheer volume alone of all of the evidence that exists makes it very difficult for the victim to use this evidence in the court of law. Sometimes there could be evidence around maybe text messages 
or um, your smart home or your Google Assistant, it's very hard for you to explain to the judge that you were sexually assaulted and someone was surveilling you through your smart device. We also saw challenges around consent issues and this could come either when gathering the evidence or after gathering the evidence. And what I mean by consent issues here is sometimes victims have the, issue, the problem of um, not knowing if they need to get consent from the perpetrator for them to record the sexual assault incident. And this is because recording the incident means you are also violating the privacy of the perpetrator. And so they, there's that um, weird or gray ground whereby they are not sure if they can record the incident and use it in the court of law or if it's gonna be admissible in the court of law. There are also challenges around ambiguous evidence and this also leads to another challenge around knowledge gap. Sometimes the judges are not even sure how to interpret evidence of a Google Assistant monitoring a victim or they're just not sure how to interpret technological evidence or they don't even know that such can be used against sexual assault victims. So again, this is just one arm. There are a lot of other challenges that were uncovered. Um, so if you do have time, please do take a look at the paper. We also came up with some recommendations on, um, to service providers, to government, to individuals around how they can help tilt that skill to make sure that technology leads to much more help for victims than harm. Um, if you do have a chance to look through the paper, please do. I won't be able to go through all of the recommendations. So in summary, our contributions to the field of work in this particular um, research is we performed the first systemized, systematic review of knowledge on the dual nature of technology in facilitating um, sexual abuse and also in assisting its victims. We identified 10 characteristics of technology that easily facilitate sexual abuse. And we also identify how technology assists victims and we group this assistance into three categories. We offer the first of its kind analysis of the challenges in using technology to support victims of sexual abuse. And we also discuss lots of um, research ideas and solutions that can help navigate these gaps. Our hope is that the characteristics that we identified will serve as a guideline for service providers even as they make solutions that can be used by victims. And we're optimistic that these findings will go a long way in developing better solutions um, that would support victims of sexual abuse. Thank you very much for listening. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Questions? All right, so why a lot of people <laughs> think about it. Uh, so do you think that, um, uh, you know, in, in, in your recommendations, are these mostly targeted towards uh, platforms or towards law enforcement or uh, should everybody work together? What is, uh, yeah. Yeah, so the recommendations, we have some just for platforms. Mm -hmm. Um, we also have some recommendations for government, and then we also have some recommendations for individuals as well. For instance, um, in terms of government, one of the challenges that we identified was legislative laws are not uniformed across different cities. So it's very easy for a perpetrator to commit a crime in a particular um, district mm -hmm. and then move on to another district. Um, so just having more uniformed legislative laws would go a long way in helping um, people. And also we also have recommendations around service providers as well. One of the challenges that we found is um, solutions that sexual abuse victims use are not regularly maintained. And this is because there is a weird revenue model around um, sexual assault apps. Um, for instance, you cannot create a sexual assault app and tell a victim to pay because they are going through trauma, so you can't ask them to pay. So we need to have a rethink around how can we help um, solution providers to provide more apps to sexual assault victims um, and also rethink the revenue model around that. Mm -hmm. 
All right, thank you. There is a question in the chat. All right, let's see. <laughs> Don't see it. Maybe I'm in the wrong place. Mm. Uh, let me see. Oh, okay. Uh, so this is a timely and important survey, but I didn't see in your paper one potential area of how technology can mediate sexual abuse in particular sexual abuse through remote sex toys and things like that. So it's more like IoT security, I guess. Yeah, I think that, that will probably be because there are not a lot of papers in that domain. So we reviewed papers from 2005 to 2021, um, but we didn't see papers around sex toys and things like that. I guess that could be the next. Yes, uh, future research. Okay, okay, uh, yeah, please. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Thank um, you. Just looking forward, uh, have you been able to open a dialogue with any of the manufacturers of these kinds of technologies? I, I know, for instance, the one in the news at the moment is things like Apple's Air Tags. Right? People are really worried about that from a abuse point of view. Um, have you been able to to talk to any of the manufacturers of these products about the work that you've done? That's a really good question. No, we haven't. But it's definitely something that. I think we should do just to open up that dialogue and to to kind of let them know what's like the disadvantages of some of these devices. But yeah, that's a good food for thought. Oh, cool. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. All right. Thank you.